Question number 25 says, which of the following solutions is a, is a solution to the differential equation the second derivative of y minus 4y equals 0? Now, this would be very difficult to find the y prime, anti-differentiate and get y prime, and then anti-differentiate again to get y. And the reason is because this is in ter the second derivative is in terms of y. So we to get that y prime, it would be very complicated. So a better strategy for this would be to guess and check, just test. Because if we take a look at the possible solutions, and there's very few solutions where when we anti-differentiate, or when we differentiate, we're going to generate the same function. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to solve for y prime, sorry, the second derivative. And I can see that the second derivative is going to regenerate the original function. So e does that, sine and cos do that. So looking at the possibilities, these are really kind of the only possibilities that we could have to give us this type of situation. So we're just going to test this because it's easy enough to differentiate these. So if I differentiate the first one, I get 2e to the 2x. The second derivative then is 4e to the 2x. And if we look at how we define the original y, this is where the second derivative is equal to 4 times the original y. So the answer is A. Now we could check the other ones as well. So we, if we test the other ones, we're going to get y prime equals 2 to the e x. y double prime is equal to 4 e to the 2 e to the x. And the original function was 2 e to the x. Oops, sorry, it's not 4. It's just going to be 2 again. 2e to the x. And so the second derivative really is just equal to not 4y, but just y. When we test, so that's going to be an x there. The first derivative here is going to be 2 cosine 2x. The second derivative becomes negative 4 sine 2x. Now we generated the original function sine 2x, but now we have negative 4y. So this is our y. So again, this is not an option. For the last one, when we check the last one, the same thing is going to happen. We're going to end up with, in this case, negative 2 sine 2x. So when we set, do the second derivative, the coefficients work out because of that chain rule. But again, and we do regenerate the same function that we started with, but again, the sign doesn't work out. That negative is a problem. So in both cases here, this, this does fit the same profile, but the negative uh, makes these, norm, these possibilities not a solution. Okay, so just clean that up a bit. Okay, so that's the problem is that negative there. Question number 26 gives us a table of values, and it says the table gives values on a continuous function. So that's important that it's in, we understand it's continuous. It doesn't necessarily say it's smooth, though, and has exactly two critical points. Two critical points. Okay, so critical points meaning that it's got to be max min like this, or it could also be where it just is a kink in the graph. Okay, so it has two criticals. Basically, it turns twice. So we have two situations where the derivative goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay, so it says, which of the following must be true? So again, what we're looking for in these type of problems are contradictions. Okay, so when I take a look at A, so I've drawn out this situation here. So if you take a look at what we have here, in these two critical points, yeah, if I just kind of draw it smoothly through there, it's going to look like this. Could have a kink like that. We don't know. Okay, so that's very important that we understand it's continuous, but not necessarily smooth. That did never on, anywhere on there it doesn't say differentiable or smooth. So when I look at this, it says f of x is greater than x for the open interval. Well. To the fact that it has two critical points means that the slope 
must, oh sorry, this is f of x, so f of x is greater than 0. We don't know if it looks like this, because we, this graph could, you know, just go through that point, like this, keep going, and then come back up like this. Okay, so we don't know, it could be a real sharp turn, because again, we can have kinks in there. So A is not necessarily possible. Okay, we can draw a contradiction for A. For B, it says F prime exists for all X in the open interval. Well, that's again, it's not necessarily true because it's not necessarily, okay, not necessarily continuous. Sorry, not necessarily smooth. Okay, although it's continuous, we don't know that it's smooth, so it can have these kind of kinks in there, which means that f prime doesn't exist at certain points. So we're going to get rid of that. f prime is less than zero for the all the whole interval from zero for ten to eleven. Okay, so from ten to eleven, I'm just going to get rid of this red part here. We don't know that f prime is less than zero because it could go down and back up through that point. And then that would mean that in this section here, we have a positive slope. So again, that's not necessarily true. So we're going to get rid of that. Okay, the last one is probably going to be D because that's all that's left. But we're going to take a look at, at 12. So it says F prime at 12 cannot be equal to zero. Well, based on the fact that there's two exactly two critical points. We know that the critical points must happen somewhere to the left of 12, and there's another one that's somewhere happening to the right of 12. That means then that all the critical points have been accounted for, which means then that the derivative here could not be equal to zero, otherwise we would have more critical points. Okay, so the answer then would be D.